we have our sprues. The A, the E, and the F. Now, I was noticing that A18 and A17, they might look a little bit alike. And, uh, would that be them? No. Okay, 18 and 17. Okay, there's 16, 15. That's 50, 51. Gotta be here somewhere. Okay, well, this is 16. 15. Oh, here they are over here. You would think that because this is like uh, 15, 14, 16, you would think that <laughs> 17 would be right over here, but it's not. It's way over here. All right. Yeah, I can see they're uh, not quite the same here. They're kind of mirror image to each other. Now, I think if I cut with the very end of the nipper, it's not going to spread too much. That's not the right piece. Run! Okay, here we go. 18. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Eighteen. Okay, we'll clear those up later. I can't believe I did that. Maybe I'm getting too old for this. Okay. That was the only A's on step seven. Let's move to sprue E. Okay, now for E58 and 59, we make two of these units, and I don't really think we need to make labels because there's no way I'm going to get them mixed up, and uh, they're both the same, so. Okay, here's 58. And 59. The second sprue, 58, and 59. Okay, now E21, that's those bases for the turret. They're both, both the same on each side, so you can't get mixed up on those either. is. It's pretty obvious. Some of these you don't even need to look for the numbers. But I do anyway, just in case. Okay, that's a one. Here again, E13 is the same on both sides. Okay, there it is, 13. Okay. 
have to be careful when I'm when I'm doing that that I don't break it off and uh, sort of damage the edge of the part. Mind you, you notice where this is going to be all going, right? It's going to be going underneath. So uh, anyway, now I do believe that's it for the E sprue. Don't see any more E's. Now on the F sprue, we need, looks like 231's, and uh, looks like four or five 52's. Well, let's get the 31's first. They're right there. Now there are three of these uh, sprues. I'm going to use the uh, Tamiya nippers here. They're just a little bit more delicate. Well, that is the right one, eh? 31? Yeah. Two of those. Now the 52s is one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it looks like there's five. Okay. 52, 52 is two. Four, five. You know what? I should be checking these off or circling them after I cut them off. Maybe I'll do that on the next page. I'm almost done here now. Okay, so 52. Okay. Here they are down here. Yeah, this whole row is 52. One, two, three, four, and five. And they look a lot like these ones here. I don't think I'll mix them up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and three is fifteen. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We got everything. You know, that can't be right. Okay, let's do it like this. 52, 52, 52, 52, 52. The reason it can't be right is because each one of these takes two pieces. So what am I, what am I missing here? Okay, that was, that's that one. that one. Okay, these two would go together to make up one of those things. These two will go together to make up this one. Now, E13, that's an E13. There's an E13. What am I missing here? Oh, I was getting really worried. Well, I certainly do hope that that's not going to be an indication of how this build is going to go. I just couldn't find the parts. 
and I had actually cut a lot of video out. My goodness. Um, anyway, I've nipped off almost all of the uh, sprue. This one here, one of the uh, pieces actually broke off, and I was noticing when I was trying to take the second one off, you know, you'll, you'll see here that I do believe that trumpeter fastened on to the wrong place. And the reason I'm saying that, this is supposed to be a little box. I'll put the macro lens on so you can see better. You probably noticed that there was a pipette showing in the last scene. Well, that's to remind me, one of the viewers wanted to know how much does it hold. We'll check it out accurately in a minute. However, now let's not try to do a whole bunch of excessive poking here. But you will see where the sprue is attached onto the box. It's actually supposed to be sort of a, like a little a little lip there. So let me turn this one up. Okay, now when I try to, you know, to file off that little piece of sprue that you see there, which I will be doing shortly, um, or when I'm trying to nip off this one, um, uh, the, there's the danger of uh, removing that delicate piece of uh, uh, of uh, the the the, t the lid of the box. In other words, it's supposed to be a lid. Like these three things are hinges, and the idea, I guess, is that it's supposed to flip open, and there's stuff inside that they need. Now, as I've said before, we're not going to be seeing these boxes anyway. However. I, I was thinking that Trumpeter may have done better to have fastened the uh, sprue in a different place. Now, maybe maybe because the way the injection molding works, um, I think it's vacuum injection as well. At least I can't see how they could get these things the, to uh, fill up if they weren't if there wasn't a vacuum going on there. You know, having done uh, having a vacuum. Uh, system down in my workshop for when I was pen turning. You remember we're doing that uh, cactus juice stuff and all that? So you kind of get to understand how this sort of thing works. Anyway, um, I, I think you get what I'm trying to say here. They should have had this connected somewhere else. Maybe down, down here on the bottom, maybe. But, hey, what do I know? As long as we're all set up like this and sort of in focus, Let's just see if I can't... See, it's, it's hard to get this in at just the right angle. Okay, we'll hold it down like that. Okay, now what I'm going to try to do is file this down so that it's, you know, it's flush with the rest of the edge of that lid, or whatever that was supposed to be. Now these ones here, of course, are going to be much, much easier to do. On, on this one here, there's actually a little bit of uh, like a screen or something, probably an air intake.
Okay, and the last one. Okay, let's check out our pipette. Okay, here's the plan. We'll just use uh, the Tamiya acrylic paint thinner here. I think it's probably about the same, um, I don't know if you call it density or what, as water is. I know that, uh, at least I believe that one milliliter of of uh, water will be like one cubic centimeter, uh, I mean, or one is one gram, I mean, and uh, also one cubic centimeter. However, it's this is not like gasoline. Uh, gasoline, I believe, is about 70, 75 percent uh, per volume of the weight of water. Um, at least when I was flying, I used to figure that gasoline weighed about seven Canadian, a Canadian gallon of gasoline, that is, weighed about seven pounds. Uh, anyway, so I can't talk and work at the same time. So here's the plan. Let's uh, get our machine going here. Okay, now if we push the tear button to go to zero, okay. Now there is graduation on the side of this thing here. Um, it goes... Okay, we're at, according to this, we're at about four and a half milliliters. Let's see what happens. Okay. So one of two things is, has happened here. Maybe I should have used water. Uh, okay, it's about at four. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much so. Okay, to that viewer. Uh, yeah, this this mark here is supposed to be half a milliliter. That's supposed to be one, and two, three, four, and five. It's it's very very hard to read, uh, but that's what it is supposed to be. Uh, but you know what? These things that cost, what, like 10 cents or something, and when they're manufactured, it could be that from day to day they change in, vol in size. So, uh, yeah, I guess you could call this a, I guess it was right up to the, to the top there, maybe 5 milliliters. Okay, I'll pour this back. Anyway, now, wasn't that fun? Now, I'm feeling kind of bad here because... I had told one of the viewers that I was going to go down into my workshop and check and see if I have any monkey pod wood left. And he, he wanted to turn a pen uh, using monkey wood. And, uh, well, I told him I, was, I, I could do that today, and I didn't do it. I got sidetracked. In fact, that's why I've got so little done here on, the, uh, on, our, on our hood. I bought a dash cam. And it's got seven little buttons on it. You know, it's four on this side, three on this side. Uh, everything is micro, micro SD. And my big arthritic fingers trying to figure this out. Well, I eventually did. I eventually did get it programmed the way I want it. Um, I'm not recording in 4K, although it does have that ability. I haven't tried it yet. I'm just recording in, I guess you'd call it 2K. It's a little better than standard high def. And uh, then I thought, well, I'm going to try it out. i got to get milk anyway. So I stuck it on my dash and off to Superstore I go. Maybe if I think of it, I'll uh, show you some footage just to show you what I got. However, uh, bottom line is I didn't get anywhere near as far as I thought I was going to. And But that's the story of my life, you know. I, I think I'm going <laughs> to get a lot done and I don't. So we're going to have to sort of wrap this up and... Uh, yeah, well, maybe I'll show you some footage of going to the store. I mean, because uh, that's sort of what I'm thinking about right now. Um, I'm kind of happy with it, and yet there's some... If I was to design this, I would do it differently. I don't know if you can see this or not, but the, the front of the lens sticks out slightly further than these things are that, that are supposed to 
you know, if you bump it up against the, the glass or anything. So you're going to have to be, like, super careful. Now, mind you, it was really cheap. And, you know, it's really, really cheap. So uh, deliver it to the house and everything. And it works. Anyway, let's go to the computer. I'll show you some footage. And, and then we'll wrap this video up. Now, I am pretty sure that some of you who know that I go as long as three weeks without driving the car, well, that was last winter. I don't know how it's going to go this winter. But anyway, as long as three weeks, what do I need a dash cam for? Anyway, but you should know if it has anything to do with photography or it's kind of gadget related, well, I kind of can't say no, especially when the price is right. And you know what, this little thing, it's even got a built-in GPS. And uh, yeah, it records my speed, where I am. Uh, yeah, and it actually seems to work okay. Now, I've only used it this morning, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're just going to test the sound here now. I'm just sort of talking the way I would to somebody if they were sitting beside me. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Emily's garden. I think that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.